stop saving tap water start saving rainwater. Rainwater is more important than gold. Yet we let it run into gutters and sewers. Every day you see desperate calls to save tap water, calls like. World is running out of water. Really? Other call is to, drop a brick in your toilet flush tank. To save water, you have to pee in the shower. Use bath water in the garden. To, to turn off the faucet while shaving or brushing your teeth to wash full loads, instead of half. To take shorter showers and never more than five minutes. Are these calls a little desperate? A little frantic? Or even, hysterical? All this hysteria for a few drops of water. When billions of liters of rainwater gets wasted daily. And children are taught in school to dislike rain by programming their minds with songs like, Rain rain go away, come again another day, little Johnny wants to play. Little Johnny cannot play in rain? Kids usually love to play in rain, then why does not little Johnny like rain? The slogans like rain rain go away, and save tap water is not by error or a mistake. It is a covert attempt to dust away the importance we give to rainwater. Elsewhere are the calls to save rainwater every rainy day. Billions of liters of rainwater gets wasted. In your neighborhood. If rainwater is not saved. Water table will fall. If we don't save rainwater the water table falls, and when the water table falls there will be lesser vegetation and lesser animals. Lesser vegetation will lead to greater soil erosion. This eroded soil will end up in underground water tanks, aquifers and rivers. This will reduce the underground water holding capacity and lead to fall in water table, which will result in less water in wells. During such a situation agriculture will become expensive and farmers will have to leave farming and move to the cities in search for other work. Then the cost of food will increase. Lesser farmers will result lesser agriculture and cattle rearing. Both of this will lead to reduced vegetation and lesser number of animals. And the cycle will continue making the situation more and more serious than the year before. This dangerous cycle can be reversed completely. To reverse it we have to 1. Harvest rainwater 2. Carry out organic farming, where no chemicals will be used and only heirloom seed variety will be used, and neither should there be any use of hybrid seeds. And 3. Use of organic farm animals Organic animals mean avoiding crossbred animals. Only local animals should be used. Animals outside the subcontinent should never be used at all. The entire idea is to create sustainable food cycle which includes sustainable water usage for crops, animals and humans. The above three will lead to less soil erosion and thus there will be less sedimentation in underground tanks. The earlier sedimentation, will in time, make way for clean rock bed by the action of running water. Because of this more water will collect in underground tanks, and there will be a rise in the water table. This will lead to more water in ground wells and the cost of organic agriculture can become zero. When financial burden in farming reduces more people from the cities will return to agriculture. As more people start farming the cost of food will fall and more land will go under cultivation. There will be less water evaporation, less soil erosion, rise in water table and the cycle will repeat making the situation more and more pleasant, but at the same time let us not forget that rain is not the only source of water on earth. Sea is the only source of water on earth. This sea water gets desalinated and falls on earth as rain. Just like sun desalinates sea water. At zero cost, the same process can be recreated by us at zero cost. And because of the fact that 70% of Earth is made up of water. Earth can never ever run out of water. Or at least, as long as there is sun's heat to evaporate seawater, to hide this fact we are programmed to think that rain is the only source of water on Earth. And farmers are made to think without rain they are completely helpless. Nature has provided us with seawater, which is a thousand times more than we will ever need. 
it is for us to desalinate and use. We are not interested in making zero-cost desalination process. But we are interested to see if there is water on the moon. It is true that without water there would be no life on Earth, so how does India stand with the availability of water? Does India get sufficient water? Or is India a water-scarce nation? The fact is that the northern part of India get water throughout the year from the melting snow in the Himalayas. The southern part of India get rain from southern monsoon winds. And the northeast gets rain from the eastern monsoon winds. The truth is India gets some of the highest rainfall anywhere on earth. India also has the 10th longest coastline in the world other than island countries. Which means desalination of seawater is a very easy, and big opportunity in India. India gets 50% water from snow and 50% from rain. The water Ganges puts out into the sea is huge. It has the world's third highest freshwater discharge rate into the sea. Not only the Ganges but there are many such rivers, almost as big as Ganges in India created by nature daily from melting snow, like Yamuna, Brahmaputra, Betwa, Gumti, Alkananda, Bajirati, Gaghera, Soon, Gundak, etc. Due to this India has the highest percentage of freshwater to land area in the world. 10% of India is covered with fresh water. Due to these factors India can never experience drought, except, of course, in the rain shadow area of India. Rain shadow is a dry area on the leeward side, away from the wind of a mountainous area. Places like Marathwada, Vidharbha, Telangana, Darwar, Gadag, Haveri, Vijaypura, Belgaum and Bhagalkot and areas of Tamil Nadu fall in the rain shadow area of India. These areas experience drought-like conditions every single year. What has to be noted is that wherever the water table falls that area becomes impoverished and people become unemployed. The daily routine that is life is broken. For six to nine months of the year life of people dependent on agriculture is very hard in these places. This is strange because on one hand India receives some of the highest rainfall in the world and India also has some of the most beautiful, gigantic, and highest number of water harvesting structures anywhere in the world. Each one of them is as beautiful as the Taj Mahal. But unfortunately, unlike the Taj Mahal, each one of these water harvesting structure lies in ruins. Sadly many Indians today do not even know what these structures do or how it functions. We even had beautifully built indoor water tanks in the central courtyard, right in the middle of the house. These served as central cooling device to bring down the ambient temperature, swimming pool and a fish tank. But unfortunately today people do not understand why these structures were built inside the house. Why did India stop building such huge tanks to save rainwater? India should have built these tanks in both flooding areas and dry areas. Then why does India not do this today? We will have to go into history to understand this. During the 200 years of British Raj, the British stopped the construction of these water harvesting structures. All aid to agriculture was stopped. British, destroyed and taxed Indian agriculture into oblivion. In 200 years India went from the granary that fed the world into one of the poorest countries in the world, the Indian Holocaust. In a country that monsoon never fails, and a country crisscrossed by rivers, a country having thousands of mammoth rainwater harvesting structures and rainwater harvesting in almost every house, temple and mosque. The British managed to create a record of 12 great famines in India killing 19 million Indians. 
This is three times more than the six million Jews that Hitler put to death during Holocaust. The idea was to create famine to decrease population and unemployment. To get Indians to join the British Army. To get Indians as laborers, in railway, forest, police and administrative departments so they can help the British to exploit and harass fellow Indians. It is a sad tragedy that the British rule continues even today 70 years after independence. Using the exact same British laws word for word and rule for rule. Subsidies are given but no permanent work is done in water harvesting. People working on their own have far surpassed the total government work on rainwater harvesting. Today nobody saves rainwater in India. Neither in the cities, nor in the villages and least of all by people living in the rain shadow areas. How does rainwater function? After falling on the earth, these drops of water gets pulled down by gravity to underground aquifers. They collect in these aquifers forming streams of underground water at two layers. The first type of aquifers are tapped into by ground well and the second is tapped into by bore wells or overflowing wells. Rain can be captured in a tank as small in size as a bathing tub. Or in a tank as large as a football field 10 floors deep. Just like we were taught to hate rains, we are also taught to kill insects that help in rainwater harvesting. Things like termites, dung beetle, ants, earth burrowing earthworms, rats and snakes all help in rainwater harvesting. We are even tutored to use the wrong kind of earthworm. This is still being taught, in Indian agriculture institutes, to use vermiculture, earthworms which are surface feeders instead of earth burrowing earthworms. Earthworm plays a major role in rainwater harvesting. There are three types of earthworms. Epigic earthworm is a surface crawler. It is the most inferior earthworm of the three. It is a litter dweller and does not burrow. It is mainly used for vermiculture. Endogic earthworm is a soil feeder and creates a network of horizontal, branching burrows. Anasic earthworm is the best rainwater harvesting earthworm. It is a fresh litter feeder and it digs deep vertical burrows as deep as 2 meters. What happens if these insects are killed? In places, gardens and farms where these insects have been killed by the use of chemical fertilizer the rainwater do not enter the soil and do not reach the underground tanks. Millions of liters of rainwater flows over the surface onto the roads. The sheer quantity of the rainwater, which millions of earthworms handled with ease, today overwhelm the infrastructure and drainage systems resulting in floods. Now on one hand you have parched land in summer and floods in winter. In summer the water table falls 900 feet below ground and on the other hand during monsoon there are floods. This is becoming a big problem not only in India but also in other countries. Many are wrongly attributing the effects of harmful green revolution or poison revolution which is chemical farming to climate change and global warming. A farmer without a pond is not a farmer. Each farmer should have a pond the size of which is 10% of the farm. The least a farm could have is a pond that has a surface area of 2,000 square feet and depth of 5 feet. This pond should not use any type of plastic lining because the rainwater will not go down into the ground. On the first shower you will get 10,000 cubic feet of water but that will be all that you will be collecting in the three months of rain. But without any lining the rainwater will sink down within a few hours of the rain. This cycle repeats every day and by the end of the monsoon the pond will stay fuller for a longer time and each day you might be able to collect underground at least 5,000 cubic feet of water. You could use this tank to grow freshwater fish. The best one is pearl spot fish because it is one of the few fishes which can live in both salt and freshwater if you slowly increase or decrease the salinity of water over a small period of time. This fish is one of the easiest to farm in India because it is difficult to genetically modify this fish and it reproduces in large numbers. It is good in taste and has a very high demand especially in Kerala. 